Hi, I'm Christina from Medway Fine Printmakers and in this tutorial for Medway Print Festival 2020 Lockdown Edition I'm going to show you kitchen lithography. So this is a process that uses oil and water um, and how they separate as a way of um, keeping an image clear on a plate. So it's that process that makes some areas on a plate able to be um, kept clean and others to be inked up with sticky ink. Um, so that's the underlying science behind it, but it does feel a bit magical in the way it works. Um, it's known for being a bit erratic, so if you don't get this working on your first go, then please give it another go. It's a very fast process and you might not get it right first time, but um, it's quite a quick turnaround, so you should be able to have another go straight away afterwards. So I'll run through all the things you need. Um, this process works really nicely with tin foil and we use Coca-Cola in order to process the image. Um, we're going to use a, an oil-based ink, but the, the images that you get from it, they are quite faithful to a drawing. So if you like drawing, um, it manages to keep quite good tone in a drawing um, in the print. So, it's a nice one if you're, if you're a fan of pencil work. Um, okay, so I'll run through all the things that we need. So, like I was saying, Coca-Cola, just the cheapest, the cheapest one that you can grab hold of. You really don't need to buy anything fancy for that. Um, we've got just some cheap vegetable oil. Um, that will um, probably be best if you pour it into another little receptacle so you don't get your inky fingers over um, the kitchen one. You want some tin foil and highly recommended that you go for extra strong because you can use the budget one but you'll get annoyed by it. It kind of folds more easily and it, um, it's not as easy to work with. You get a better result from a stronger one. This is for cleanup. Um, we're going to be using an oil-based ink. So this is, um, not sure if you can see that, but Litho Relief Ink from Intaglio. So it's completely oil-based and you need oil to clean it up or spirits. So um, if you've been using the water-based Safe Wash, Aqua Wash from the previous tutorials, that won't work with this process. It has to be just oil-based because that water and oil repelling each other is a key part of this process. But Zesty is a nice orange oil cleaner, like a natural cleaner, so it's much kinder on your skin than something like white spirit would be. So you can use that as a final um, uh, wipe up. Um, some old magazines are useful just for keeping things clean. We've got some kitchen roll, quite a few bits of that is useful. I normally chop them up a bit so I don't use so much. Uh, scissors and we need some paper. When you're doing your design it's quite good to start off with something quite simple to begin with because otherwise you might, uh, if you don't get a result right away, although your drawing would have gone to waste. So get used to the process first. So I've just done some simple eyes and kind of little characters um, and you'll see this one, it's on a textured paper and it, that texture picks up on the paper, whereas if you'd use a smoother paper it's you get more of the detail of the drawing. So the ink, oh it's very useful to have um, just some cloths, these are bits of t-shirt material that are chopped up, so you'll need um, several bits, you can use sponges as well if you like. Um, you'll need a rubber roller, I quite like using the small ones for this, um, you can um, just ink up a bit more easily all over the image with that. Somehow applying the pressure feels good with a small one. Uh, you might want to cover your table with um, some newspaper. And the kind of paper that I'll be using is a very thin um, cartridge, very smooth, South Bank smooth that is. But if you've got just ordinary printer paper, so this one's just regular 80 GSM. This one's a bit thicker, like a deluxe, thicker printer paper. So we can have a go and see how those work too. Then you'll need 
a little tray with some water in and I've got some more um, t-shirt material cloths there. Um, something to draw with, so China Graph pencils. Um, I love these. Uh, I'll show you close up in a bit, but they're very old fashioned. They've got kind of like a paper wrap around them and to, rather than using a sharpener, you um, peel this, these bits off. And then um, litho crayons as well. So these are very oily um, little square crayons that are made for this process. You can get from printmaker suppliers. But these you can just get in ordinary um, stationery shops and sometimes places like Wilco's sell them. Um, a little brush for uh, brushing off any extra bits of the uh, pencil marks on your plate. Something to burnish the paper with, so we've used wooden spoons in the past um, for burnishing. I like using this uh, cow horn spoon, but a wooden spoon uh, will do just as well. And then we need a couple of um, plastic sheets. So. Um, this is something I use a lot in the studio for lots of different things, palettes for making little screen frames and things. Um, so you need one of these for uh, rolling out your ink. Uh, it could be a tile or a plate or even a glossy magazine. And then you'll need one to go behind your tin foil to act as a support for your, for your drawing. Um, so something flat and waterproof um, is a good idea. Uh, in a pinch you could do a kind of... Um, thick card, maybe a laminated card. So, oh and some masking tape to stretch out your tin foil. I think that's everything. Oh, I've got a pencil sharpener there so I can just sharpen the very end of um, the China Graph pencil. I think that's it. Okay. Um, we'll also be using the sink to do the processing part with the coke so it's good to have a washing up bowl and um, another thing to, to scoop up the Coca-Cola and pour, keep pouring it over the, um, over the plate when you're processing it. Okay, I think that's everything we need, so I'm gonna get you to come over close up and I'll show you what to do. I'm gonna take this foil, and the first really important thing to know is you must not touch this anywhere that you want to transfer your printable image because the grease off of your fingers will make printable marks so you don't want to touch it so get it out of the um, packet carefully and don't touch it and just roll it out you're also trying not to crease it at all so we want a piece that's nice and flat I'm going to take my scissors and cut it down flat as possible and I'll put this one back in the box. I tend not to use the tear off part of the box because it tends to crease things up more so I'm only touching this around the edges now. I'm just going to trim it off a little bit at the top here which is worse here at the top. And then I'm going to get one of my cloths, clean cloths, and a bit of masking tape. I like these blue masking tapes, painters tapes. They're um, just you can reuse bits of the tape, and um, it just seems to have a really good level of tackiness to it for a lot of jobs. So I'm going to take this piece and attach it to my plastic sheet at the top there. So. Some people wrap it all the way around, but I find it easier to um, to work this way, and it gives you quite a nice clean edge as well. So now I'm going to use the one of the cloths just to smooth the tin foil down. so it's key to be gentle with this the whole time so you're 
trying not to make too sudden moves and we're definitely not touching that with our greasy fingers um, okay let's get those bits out of the way the other good thing to do at the, um, this point when you've got um, before you sort of get too far into it is to roll the ink out so it doesn't end up getting too mucky on your fingers later so I'm just going to get that bit done so move this tin foil away so once again it's the litho let's see if I can focus on that intaglio litho relief ink um, and I'm just going to squeeze a bit out the top if I get any of this on my fingers I'll just use a bit of um, vegetable oil and a bit of soap to rub it off you could wear gloves if you want to if you want to um, not have to keep washing your hands so that should be enough and I'll get this out of the way that, so I'm just going to roll this out so when you're rolling out this ink you want to get pick up a little bit to begin with and sort of spread it out and one of the key things of um, rolling out properly is that you keep lifting the uh, roller up so that it doesn't just keep getting the same um, sort of rat run so you don't see so if you move it around it will spread the ink rather than just putting it in the same place all the time so I've just picked up a bit of the ink I haven't taken the whole lot and I'm going backwards and forwards and I'm trying to get this good and even so it shouldn't be hissing too much it should just be making a soft a soft noise I might need to pick up a bit later but that will do for now clean fingers right so <clears throat> This is where we can now start doing our drawing. So I've, um, when I've put the tin foil down, I've had it so it's the less shiny side up. I prefer drawing on that side. Okay, got hold of it there. And then you just unravel it and it will expose some more of the nice crayon inside. So yeah, rather than wood, it's got paper holding the whole thing together. So I'm just gonna, um, quickly draw out a design and um, it's important to yeah keep your fingers away from the anywhere on the tin foil but also to draw quite strong marks so you want to go over them a little bit as well once you've sketched something out you can use carbon paper to transfer a design onto here as well um, I would generally go over it with the China graph pencil but some people have found success with just the carbon onto the um, onto the tin foil Anyway, so I'll sketch something out and um, then I'll show you which step to go next. So. I would suggest doing a variety of marks with your first one so do something quite simple but maybe try out doing some lines some some really sketchy stuff some some things like sort of dots um, some cross hatching bits just try out some different marks so you can see what becomes more reliable um, in the final result so just gonna go in a bit heavier with this quite sure what my current obsession with fairly sinister looking vegetables is at the moment but I have been doing a lot of gardening since we've been shut at intra if you need to get further into the picture just use something else to, to lean on so you don't um, end up moving your hand onto the plate.
So I've ignored my own advice of doing something simple, but we'll see how this goes. Next step is going to the sink and exposing this with some Coca-Cola. So I've got my plate ready, I've got my Coke here. I'm going to um, just pour some of that Coke into a little pot that I've got. So I've got some fresh Coke. I've already done this um, today, so I've got some down in there bowl as well so you can use up the old stuff but I want some fresh stuff to begin with and I'm just going to pop it into this bowl and pour it all over the plate and you want to really make sure that it's going all over where the drawing is It's getting a bit of a reaction between the the greasy marks and the cola. Okay, I think that's long enough. So I'm going to shake off as much as I can. And then just give it a little bit of a wipe up with some kitchen towel to get all that wet cola off of there. So I didn't get an awful lot on the back there, so that's why you can get away with something like a laminated cereal box or something to, to use as your backing if you don't have a piece of plastic like this. So once again, I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. It's very easy to make creases at this point, so trying to avoid that as much as possible. So I'm just going to use a bit of the vegetable oil. It doesn't need loads. Start with that and just give the plate a good wipe just to remove that drawing. And you should start to see actually that the, um, the drawing is etched. It will leave its, the drawing will, will remain even though you've uh, removed the, um, the waxy crayon. Um, you'll be able to see the mark of it underneath as you clean it off. I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but I'll do a close-up once I've removed it all. I'm going to try and get as much of this oil off here as now as possible, with um, still being careful of the plate and making sure I don't get any creases, extra creases in there. It's very easily done. So once I've wiped it off as much as I can with the oily cloth, get another clean cloth. Uh, see if you can take a little bit more off. So it should look fairly dry by the time you've done that. So let's see if you can catch a little glimpse of the image on there. If we take a little bit of the water, so squeeze out one of your cloths and just give it a gentle wipe over the top and perhaps, perhaps you can see the image just starting to appear now in the way that it's repelling the, um, the water so it should, the water should be kind of running away from those areas that the um, greasy drawing was underneath so can we see that? Okay, now I'm going to start inking up, so I'm going to get some of this ink on the roller and let's see if it is happy. Yeah, so it's picking up all the places where the greasy drawing was. You want to go quite carefully at this um, stage, so going in quite gently. I want it to only go on the areas where the drawing was. Sometimes if it gets either too dry 
or if you have too much ink on the roller it will start to go everywhere so you can add more and more in lots of different goes so start off gently she's doing pretty well with most of those marks even the ones that are quite quite pale so I'm going to actually put a bit more water on so in between you don't want the plate where the um, where the drawing isn't, you don't want those bits to um, dry out, so keep it wet. Your ink is um, oil based so it won't smudge unless you press too hard, so just go gently over the top of it. So I'll pick up a bit more ink and we'll gradually add enough for us to do our print. So if you find it's um, going onto the plate in places it shouldn't, it's probably because the plate was too dry. If the plate was completely dry then the ink would just go all over it. And now I just need to get a piece of paper to go over the top of it. And um, it's wet underneath there so this paper is going to have to be able to soak up a bit of that wet um, the water on the plate um, but this is going to be good for the job we'll see whether the photocopy paper um, is up to the job in a minute because we can get several prints out of this so just laying it down at this point if you want to you can protect the back of the paper by um, putting a piece of scrap paper over the top but I'm just going to burnish straight onto this uh, you could also use greaseproof paper if you like you could reuse Grease your paper quite nicely. So I'm just going all over where I know the drawing is. I can see through it a little bit because this paper is quite thin. So it's cartridge paper. It's got a bit of body to it so it will be able to soak up that water without too much problem. But it's quite nice and smooth so it's going to pick up the detail. So without lifting it completely up, I'm just going to have a little look at how that's going and just seeing where I need to do a little bit more burnishing. If you feel um, sometimes with the paper, if it's quite thin, you can um, feel it getting a little bit stuck as the water's coming through the paper. It's coming through a little bit over there and it sort of just catches on the spoon. So that's where the greaseproof paper also would be um, quite handy. See how I'm doing this end. Pretty good, just a couple of little bits. There we go. Oh, it moved just a little bit, so it's slightly blurry. So I have to see if I can um, uh, do a little bit better on the next one. Okay, so this paper is now damp and in order to dry it so that it's um, uh, not crinkly when it's, uh, when it's dry, you want to wrap it in a couple of pieces of tissue paper. Uh, it's oil-based ink so it's not going to um, permanently stick to the tissue paper. Um, so wrap it in that and then put it underneath a heavy book and then it will dry nice and flat. Just move that one out of the way. Let's have another go. So I'm going to ink up again. Um, I'm going to wet the plate once more. Of those prints that I just made, there was the cartridge, um, the thin, ordinary sort of inkjet photocopier paper, um, 80 GSM, and then a, a more heavyweight one, I think, 120 GSM um, heavyweight inkjet paper. 
and that one came out really beautifully actually really nice um, results on that one I've, I'll definitely carry on doing some prints with that um, this one didn't work out so well I think it's because um, I had to put another piece of paper over the back of it when I was um, uh, burnishing it because um, the water really does come immediately through so that's a bit too thin for my liking but you can see the the print you know what have we done now um, about five prints here and it's still holding up really nicely so I could easily um, get another good ten or more out of this um, but what I'll show you is how to clean up the plate and um, also when um, when it's drying out so this would have dried out and help it along a little bit um, if you if you've just forgotten to add a bit of water in between inking up and you find that it ends up kind of sticking a bit you can just get a bit of water on there and rub it up and unless you've been I was quite heavy-handed with that one but you'll find it will still go back to those original marks and you can clean it up so don't despair if you if you end up forgetting to wet the plate it will wipe up clean again as long as your etch worked okay um, okay so if we want to take this off then um, we'll use the oil again Um, so that image is still on there, and if I want to, I could still use it. So I've just taken it down like we did originally when we cleaned the image off, um, taking it down to cleaned with oil, cleaned off with oil, and if I wanted to start again, I'll come back to this. It's still going to do that same process and still link it up so I'm going to go back though I'm going to take this off um, so you can use the oil to clean up your um, plate as well so um, if you've got any leftover ink you might want to scrape that into a little pot to use later um, and anything that you don't want to use you can get that magazine and just scrape off you can um, scrape off the worst of the ink and then just get in there with the vegetable oil and it's the same for the rollers really um, to get rid of that quite often I will just go like this on a page to get the worst of it off. Nice thing about magazines, you can always turn over to another page to get rid of some more muck. with my zest it um, you can, you, if you haven't got this or any other cleaner you don't have to do it either it won't harm your roller it's just to get it that just a little extra bit clean thanks for watching this tutorial I hope it's inspired you to have a go at this printmaking technique and if you do, we'd really love to see your prints, so um, please share them, use the festival hashtag, um, we'll put that at the end of the video, and I'll list all of the um, things that we've used in this um, tutorial. And if you've got any questions, um, please post them and I'll see if I can answer them. Thanks a lot, happy printing.